Hi, God bless, and welcome everyone here to Talk Straight Bible. This is Elsie with you all here in this day, as always, giving God the glory, the honor, all the exaltation, all the praise, all the worship, because He alone, He deserves it. In this morning, I want to share with you a short and simple message the Lord put in my heart, and it is entitled, Jesus Saves, and it's from the book of Acts chapter 16 verse 31 the word of god says so they said believe on the lord jesus christ and you will be saved you and your households when you read the entire chapter 16 of the book of acts which i encourage you to please read it paul and silas were beaten in prison in rome for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you think about it, if you were living in that time and you went out to preach the gospel and you wanted to tell others about Jesus Christ, they would do the same to you as they did with Paul and Silas. In today's way of living, we have evil and wicked people who are being used by the enemy. They're doing the same thing, but they do it a little bit more sneakier. <laughs> they don't want you to, to speak about God or mention the name of Jesus in various places. It irritates them and it annoys them because Jesus, he is the only one who can save all of these false gods these false idols, these ditties of gods that they worship, they can't do nothing for them. But our God that we serve, that we worship, who is still sitting on the throne, we know that he saves. We know that he sent his son here to this earth. And through the sacrifice that Jesus Christ did for us on the cross to save humanity no one else can do that so that's why the name of jesus irritates so many people who don't have a relationship with him who don't know him who don't believe in him you know jesus said in matthew chapter 10 verse 22 and you will be hated by all for my name's sake but he who endures to the end will be saved. Paul and Silas, they were on a mission. <laughs> they wanted all to know that in order for one to be saved, that they must believe in Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. When you think about how these two men went out preaching the gospel of the good news and they had to suffer by being beaten, ridiculed, and in prison and so on. Think about the suffering Jesus endured just to save you, just to save me. This month, many are celebrating the resurrection of Christ. Many are reflecting of what he did for humanity on the cross Many sermons are being preached on the power of his resurrection and, the, and, and they're rejoicing on his return. Well, one of the things Jesus did when he came down from heaven to earth, he saved us. He's our savior. And when he returns to pick up his church, he's coming to save us. He's coming to take us home. There were many meanings as I was studying the word saved and I was studying this verse of scripture and many things that had to do with this. Um, there were many, many different um, meanings for the word saved. Some commentaries stated that the word saved is the most misunderstood word that many pastors, teachers, ministers today are teaching and speaking on. But out of all this, there was one meaning that caught my attention in the Old Testament dictionary. And the word saved means deliverance. To be saved means to be delivered. 
when you think about all these things, despite the sinful nature and the rebellious ways of humanity, God still desires to save his people. That's tremendous. It is he who helps in present times of trouble and delivers you from your enemies. He preserves you and he keeps you safe. He's your rescuer. He's always saving us right on time. He's never late. He is the lover of our soul. And when you read Romans chapter 5, verses 8 to 9, it says, But God demonstrates his own love towards us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having known, been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. As we open God's word, we read how much he loves us, John three sixteen. But we can see by the evidence of what Jesus Christ did for us, that while we were still sinners, he died for us. It's beyond anything that we can even comprehend that our Father in heaven, who formed us in the womb of our mother's belly, who loved us first, who knows everything there is to know about us, our rising up from our sitting down, the number of hairs that are on our heads. He knew when we were going to fail him. He knew when we were going to reject him, when we were going to turn away from him. But yet he still sent us a savior who would deliver us, who would restore us, who would heal us, and most importantly, who would save us. We are blessed. This message today that the Lord put in my heart As I said in the beginning, it is short, but it's simple. Jesus is the only one who can save. Jesus is the only deliverer. He is the only healer, the only restorer, the redeemer, the one who is coming back for church, for his bride. Hallelujah. Remember that Jesus is the only way to the Father. When you confess him with your mouth and tongue, when you believe that he died on the cross for your sin, Jesus Christ is the only one who can save us. May you be blessed in this day. May the peace of God be with you wherever you go. Jehovah Shalom all over you. May you have a blessed week in the Lord. And may you reflect on what Jesus Christ did for you. And what he did for me. Because he suffered on that cross. He was beaten. He was whipped. He was mocked. He was ridiculed. He was, he was, he endured so much suffering just to save us. So I pray that as this week begins to unfold for you. Just take a moment and say, Lord, thank you for saving me. Thank you for being my redeemer. Thank you for being the lover of my soul. May you have a blessed week in the Lord. And until we meet again, shalom.